What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video, another video on the BMW today. And today I'm going to be replacing the entire drive belt kit which comes with the belt itself, the tensioner and the idler pulley. Along with that I'm also going to be replacing the crankshaft pulley which is also commonly known as the engine dampener it uh, obviously dampens a lot of vibrations on the engine but it is common for that to fail anywhere between 100 and 200 thousand miles i plan on keeping this car on the road for a good amount of time now so i'm going to be replacing the whole lot it's worth doing um, you know, kind of when you're in that area, you may as well just replace the entire kit along with the crankshaft pulley. There's no point just replacing the belt um, because it's likely that all the other components in the kit have worn as well. Now, there is no history to determine whether or not this, this belt has ever been replaced. To be honest, they do last over 100,000 miles, so I highly doubt that it has been before so today i'm just going to be overhauling the entire lot so without further ado let's get outside let's get the bonnet up and let's get cracking okay then so for those of you that have the n47 engine you'll know that this is what the engine bay will look like well something a little like this this is the 5 series if you have the 3 series or the 1 series then obviously a lot slightly different but we will remove the engine cover And then we'll also remove this front trim piece here. It's just uh, held in by two T30 bolts, one either side. And as you can see, we have much better access to the drive belt kit itself. So then the parts that we will be replacing today is this crankshaft pulley at the bottom. And then the drive belt kit itself, which comprises of the tensioner this idler pulley and then the belt. Now bear in mind there are actually two different belts for this. So if your engine has hydraulic power steering built onto it which is this power steering pump at the bottom then you will have the same belt kit as mine but if yours has electric power steering then you may need another idler pulley down here so bear in mind there are two different kinds you need to make sure you have the correct kind now you also may be wondering why is there just a big blank space here if you don't already know i have already completely removed the egr system one of the benefits of doing so is it makes access to the entire front of the engine so much easier so i have so much better access now for the water pump and for the entire rest of the drive belt kit. So, with that being said, I think we are ready to get going. Okay then, so first thing is first, we need to take the belt itself off. And to do this, all you need to do is locate the tensioner, which is this bolt down here. And what you need to do is just attempt to turn that bolt clockwise so just try and tighten it and then it will actually take the tension off then take the tension off the belt and that means you can then remove it so if i just turn that as you can see the belt is then going slack and if i turn that i should be able to take this belt off here then and there we go that's the belt off and there we go, that's the belt fully removed. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove the crankshaft pulley itself. Now it's held in by four of these E12 socket bolts. Now to remove these, it may not be that easy because if you have, especially on the one and three series, you may not have that great of access here. You may find that the radiator fan may be too close to even get a ratchet and socket in this space. So you may actually have to remove the radiator fan 
but luckily in my case this is a 5 series and I've actually managed to get a small impact wrench onto the bolts and so I've got the E12 socket on the end of there and then because I'm not going to be able to remove them all the way I'm just going to loosen them and then tighten them back up just to the tightness where I can undo them again with my hand and obviously I'll be able to remove the impact wrench then. So that's loosened, I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit, just enough so that I can remove the impact wrench. And I've actually loosened all four bolts as well so these should be nice and loose now. Now bear in mind if you are doing this with just a standard ratchet then you will need to find some way of locking the crankshaft but there is one of the bolts removed and there is the final bolt removed now the crankshaft pulley should come off just needs a little bit of gentle persuasion I think Okay then, so as you can see, the crankshaft pulley is now removed. Now, a little bit rusty on the back, but that's no cause for concern. But where there is cause for concern is the fact that in this rubber part here, there is some very fine cracks, and this is generally where these tend to fail. So because this is two parts essentially, so there is this back plate and then there is the actual pulley part with the rubber part fixed to it the rubber cracks and then it separates and then this essentially becomes two parts so the pulley will continue spinning but the crankshaft will not and obviously that you that can cause a whole bunch of problems and it can send your belt going flying so it's always worth replacing this before this fails and uh yeah, I'm just, just glad that I am replacing this now. Okay, so next thing to do then is to remove the tensioner and the idler pulley, which is it's just covered by a cap there. There's, there is a bolt behind that. But I just want to point something out to you. So this is the tensioner, right? Now, see if you can listen to this. Yeah, that that bearing is completely shot. So here is the new tensioner and this is how it should sound. So virtually no sound at all. That's the new one and this is the original. Yeah, this thing did not have a whole lot of life left in it. There's the bolt out. Okay then, so after removing this pulley on the tensioner, I cannot seem to remove the tensioner itself. So what I'm gonna do is remove the idler pulley and then see if there's another bolt holding this thing again. cap off and on this idler pulley there is a T50 bolt which really wasn't done up very tight at all there we go and that's that removed 
And now as we can see, there is actually another bolt which looks like another T50 which bolts the tensioner to the engine block. And that is a long bolt. But that is the tensioner now removed. And that is actually everything that we need to remove today. So we have removed the drive belt, we've removed the crankshaft pulley down at the bottom there, and then we have removed the drive belt tensioner and the idler pulley. Now it's just going to be a complete reverse of what we've just done. So we're going to start off by fitting the new crankshaft pulley and I'm actually going to apply a little bit of grease on here as well just to make sure it goes onto the crankshaft as easy as possible. So just get a bit of grease. Put that on there. And we just need to make sure that we line this up correctly. And I have four new bolts to go in as well. Okay then, so that is the crankshaft pulley on. Obviously, the bolts aren't done up tight yet, they're just done up hand tight. Can be a little bit fiddly to line up the holes on the pulley with the holes in the crankshaft though, so you may have to play around with it a bit. So that is the pulley on. Obviously they just need torquing down now. The next thing we'll do is the tensioner. So it's just held in by this long bolt. So let's position this where it needs to go. And there is actually a dowel on the back of the tensioner as well so that obviously needs to seat in its proper place. And that's it. And the torque setting for this bolt right here is 38 newton meters. So let's torque this down. There we go. And now we can install this new idler pulley. So that just goes in up here. And this is just tightened down to 19 newton meters. That's really not going to be tight at all. Just 19 newton meters for that. Okay then, so here is how we're looking so far then. So we have the new crankshaft pulley on with the four bolts in. We have the new tensioner on and then we have the new idler pulley on and those two are torqued up. All we need to do now is install the new belt and then we can torque up the crankshaft pulley bolts. Now in terms of what brands do I recommend for the drive belt components, I either recommend going with genuine BMW or going with someone like Gates, which are OEM quality. I always use Gates when it comes to my drive belt components. So obviously we have the Gates Micro V tensioner and then we have, this is for whatever reason called the tensioner, but it's not, it's just the idler pulley. And then we have the Gates drive belt as well. And for the crankshaft pulley, I actually went with Febby Bilstein. It is of OEM quality as well. And the kit actually came with the four new bolts. Okay then, so let's just put this cap back on here. And now it is time to install the new belt. It's about remembering which way it went. So. Right, so we know it went over the top. Let's get under here first. Go. 
go. Should be everything on. So it's around the alternator on the underside of the idler pulley, around the water pump, around the tensioner, around the crankshaft pulley, around the power steering pulley, around the AC compressor pulley, and then back around the alternator pulley. Okay, the pin can now be removed from the tensioner. Let's do that now. Yep. And now all that's left to do is torque the four crankshaft pulley bolts. And these have to be torqued to 40 newton meters plus 120 degrees. So we'll torque them all to 40 newton meters first. And that is all four bolts torqued down to 40 newton meters plus 120 degrees. And that actually works out to around 80 to 90 newton meters. And now what's left to do is start it up. Okay then, so that is the crankshaft pulley and the drive bout kit replacement complete. I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. I hope it's been, you know, kind of easy to follow along. I know the camera angles and whatever else hasn't been the greatest. I'm just going to be honest, the access at the front of the engine bay on these cars really isn't the greatest, especially if you have a 1 or a 3 series. Um, you know, I wasn't going to go ahead and remove the whole front, front bumper assembly um, But I, I, I just worked with what I had and I've done my best So I hope that you guys appreciate that. I want to thank you guys for watching Please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so because I've got so many more BMW videos left to come and I'll see you guys in that next video peace